Hey everybody, it's been a long time since I've made a pouring video and I'm just going to do a back to the basics traditional acrylic pour that started you know seven or eight years ago when I started my channel. Um, I'm not going to do the fancy Sheely Bloom or anything like that. I'm just going to do traditional acrylic pours. I'm going to do a tree ring and then maybe a swipe and I'm going to do both techniques in this one video just to show you two basic things that you can do with just regular paint of any brand uh, American Flood Flow Troll which is latex water-based. show you that. My white and black are still the ones that I get from Michaels, the Artist Loft, black and white. They used to be called Flow Acrylic now. I think they're called Soft Body. And for all the colors, I'm going to mix one for you. We're going to do basically one part paint, one part Floetrol. And all the colors that I'm doing today are Craft Smart from Michaels. They're inexpensive and they're great. They get great results. You can do it as a starter or as a, an experienced pourer. You can use these and they come up with nice results. So these are also a matte finish, just want to let you know that. They come in 16 ounce bottles, uh, 8 ounce bottles, down to 2 ounce bottles. I even mixed up a lime green. I didn't have a Craft Smart in that. And I just used two paints like yellow and green to make like a lime. When you use two paints, you're going to still do one part uh, paint. You could go up to two parts flow trawl if you want to, or just keep it one part to one part. But you can you can up the flow trawl a little bit if you want to, and you'll, you'll definitely need to add water to this to get it to the right consistency. You want a consistency of uh, honey or melted milkshake. I've got, I don't know how much paint here, I'm just looking in my cup and I'm going to double that with Floetrol so that it's one part paint, one part Floetrol. And I, uh, I moved to a new house. We're going to be building a studio in the attic space, which is a large walkout area and uh, won't get that done until early 2025. So I can't set up my filming table. I don't have anywhere to put it right now. So I'm working in my kitchen. That's why I'm not doing a lot of videos on uh, acrylic pouring or resin or anything like that because of the space. So that is just one part paint to one part Floetrol. If it feels a little bit thick, don't know if you can see that, but I put just a hint kind of like a few drops of water into it. I don't have my squeeze bottle with the water in it either. It'd be good to keep a squeeze bottle around with water and a little bit of Floetrol mixed in. It just helps mix into your paints better. So this is what I did with all of my paints. And it's just a nice creamy, like I said, kind of melted milkshake consistency. So for a 12 by 12, which is what I'm working with, I got push pins on the bottom to keep it elevated off the puppy pad. You'll, get, you'll need about six ounces of paint. And this is a nine ounce cup, so I'm going to go, you know, probably three quarters of the way full. I'm just going to layer it up. I'm going to start with a, just a pinch of white. Let's see, let's just go ahead and start with this pretty bright magenta color. I'm probably putting in about an, less than an ounce. I have no silicone or anything like that in these paints. It's strictly the paint and Floetrol. That yellow went straight down in. I'm going to separate it with a little bit of white again before I go with the greens. Just try to lightly layer it on there. You can also um, pour the layers down the side of the cup to help keep them from dropping down if you want to as well. It's been literally 
a year or two since I have done pours. I did a commission for Kathleen Osmore, Cause Creations, um, and that was a swipe, and that was literally one of the, the last things I've done. Okay, I'm gonna come back and put a little bit of this beautiful magenta color. I have black, but I don't think I want any black on it. So I'm gonna just take a little puddle of white and just spread it out with my hand a little bit. It doesn't have to be precise because this is all gonna be poured on and tilted off. Okay, so. And I'm just gonna kind of move it around. I'm just going to torch gently with a little bit of heat to get rid of any air bubbles. And let's just tilt. And I'm going to just kind of evenly try to get it to go in all directions. I'm going to put a little white along the edges just to help. Again, the white is just Floetrol and water. And it can be a little thinner than your other paints as well. That kind of helps it just roll over the edge a bit. I love those colors right there, so if you want a certain color combination to kind of show up, then that's kind of the way you want your last tilt to go away from that side. So I've got cells even though I have no nothing in it that's been added for cells. And it doesn't look like a tree ring at all, but I didn't really want to just try to keep it in a circular fashion. I wanted to kind of um, give it some interest with the striations of color. And then I'm just coming around the edges, taking a little color and rolling it over with my finger. And I think I'm pretty happy with that right there. I've done over a thousand probably acrylic pours and I used to really mess with them a lot like right here if I didn't want that big old blob I could you know try to put some color there like take a little color off the puppy pad That just kind of takes care of that blob that was right there. I don't mind the other ones that are smaller. So I'm pretty content with this one. All right. So now we're going to move on to the next one. Okay, now this one we're going to do a swipe. Put a little bit of white on the canvas. You can use a spreader, an icing fondant spreader. The... Um, the ones that look like long spatulas. This is just to help the paint flow over the surface. I want cells. And in the past, 
I would add a drop of OGX anti-breakage serum for your hair, coconut milk, to each of my colors. One drop, no matter how many ounces, just one drop color. Uh, this time, I've got my black mixture. I'm just, you know, I've got, I don't know how many ounces, probably about four ounces or so. One drop into there. So this is going to be my swiping color. I'm just stirring that into my black and then I'm going to just go in a rainbow color fashion. Green and orange can be really powerful. As you notice, I didn't have any orange in the last one and I'm, I don't have any orange that I'm using, period. A lot of times your yellow can go into your green or your pinks or reds and then it can make an orange or whatever color so that's kind of what I'm wanting to do with this one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black, move this down a bit, hopefully you can see it. So I'm going to totally cover that end of the canvas over the edges and everything. And I've got a nice quality, not the cheap, this is um, I think from Sam's Club, but Viva is one that I really, really like too. It's a damp paper towel. And I'm going to kind of scrunch it up in my hands and just use my fingers to kind of hold out in a straight line as well as I can over the black. It's a little bit folded right there. Let me see if I can get that to flatten out. Hopefully that'll work. So we're going to leave it bunched up in our hand and then we're just going to gently drag and let it just fall over the edge of the canvas. Look at all those cells and I didn't put it in anything but the black. So I've got a little white from the canvas showing here. So I'll just go back over the end here. Like I said, this is one of just the old fashioned, good old techniques that is successful pretty much every time you do it. So I've got another piece of paper towel and I'm just gonna tear it so I have a little piece so that I can just kind of gently Drag that black over that white and I'm kind of letting up. You can also take the canvas and tilt it that way and that'll get rid of some of that at the bottom so you don't have so much black if you don't want it. So let's just do that just a little bit. That also helps to stretch your cells out a little bit. I'm not tilting it much. I think that's good. I don't, I don't want to do too much stretching. If you have any areas that are like a little light on the black, you can go back in and just kind of dab it with your finger. And then those cells will continue to pop through. I'm also doing my corners, my sides. If you need to add color on the sides, pick up the color that is right underneath the uh, blank spot so that you don't make mud. Because you want your sides to be just as pretty as the front and the top is. And it will continue to move as the paint kind of drifts, it's going to continue to move over the sides and everything anyway. 
but that one is finished as well. You can also get a straw and you can blow. And wherever you blow, you puff, that will kind of bring up the color underneath the black if you want to. I love this the way it is, so I'm just gonna leave it. This, when it dries, would make a beautiful background for some artwork on top of it with the paintbrush. So that may probably be what I do. All right, so I will post pictures at the end of the video of the dried finished pieces. I hope you learned something from this basics video, uh, acrylic pouring 101, tree ring pour with just straight out paint, flow trial and water, and then adding OGX to the black in this one, bringing out all these beautiful cells. You can also do it the other way, put a drop into each of the colors and use the black. And this is a 12 by 12. If you do a large canvas, um, you'll probably get larger cells because you have more surface area that you'll be swiping and so forth. So um, just keep that in mind. So thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Thanks for being here and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.